Okay, it is 12 o'clock. All right. Um, thank Good luck, you. everybody. Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining us today for the AAF Omaha Professional Development Program, the State of Digital Media. We've invited a diverse panel of thought leaders and digital media professionals to join us today. We want all attendees to feel free to voice questions through the Q&A function during this webinar. I'm Jenny Allenbaugh, the Director of Media Services at Anderson Partners, and I serve on the AAF Board of Directors and co-chair the professional development team with Aaron Berman, co-owner of Folk Branding. So grab your lunch and we'll get started with today's discussion in just a few minutes. Um, AAF Omaha has been offering professional development programs, webinars, thought leaders, and fun activities for members virtually throughout the pandemic. We learned a lot along the way. We'll continue to offer, offer virtual programming in coming months. We hope to be back in person with live events later this summer or early fall. AF Omaha is the unifying voice for advertising throughout Nebraska. In July, the two local Nebraska chapters of the AAF will merge to become AAF Nebraska. If you are not currently an AAF member, now is an exciting time to join our membership. AAF offers, organization, offers an organization to educate, inspire, and bring an inclusive sense of community to advertising professionals in our area so that we and future generations can continue to do the work that we love. For more than 14 months, we have been offering events like today's professional development programming free to our members as a membership benefit. We will be open for Q&A toward the end of the discussion. Feel free to use the Q&A function with your questions um, during the discussion. And I'm today's panel moderator. As I mentioned, I'm the Director of Media Services at Anderson Partners which is a full service advertising agency and marketing communications firm. I've been with Anderson Partners since 2017 and before that spent 12 years with Godfather's Pizza as a senior marketing manager. So today we'll learn all about targeting in a cookie-less word as Google announced that it had planned to, it has planned to remove third-party cookies from its Chrome browser by 2022. So how can you prepare your organization, partners and customers? Well, we'll find out, and also we'll discuss privacy and programmatic and in-house versus managed services. The AAF team assembled today's panel with industry and professionals that are going to share how to tackle these changes. So we have five panelists with us to share their thoughts and insights as we learn how to move forward. Uh, first, we have Liz Enfield, and she's the Vice President of Client Analytics at Centro, where she is responsible for leading a team of analysts in providing data strategy and in-depth media analysis to both brands and agencies across all verticals. In her 10 years at Centro, Liz has seen the evolution of media measurement from basic metrics to MTA and MMM, and she finds the new challenge with the elimination of cookies to be an opportunity to further evolve the way we track and measure media performance. With a bachelor's in economics, she most enjoys the blending of hard data and business insights to create performance narratives for Centro clients and furthermore training her team on data storytelling. Liz and her husband, who is also in the ad tech industry, recently completed a historic home renovation in Chicago where they live with their two young daughters, ages three and one. Liz, I'd like to welcome you and please tell us a little bit about Centro and your role there. Sure, thank you. So Centro is a provider of enterprise class software for digital advertising organizations. We have a technology platform basis, which is the first of its kind SaaS advertising solution, unifying programmatic and direct media buying along with workflow automation, cross-channel campaign planning, reporting, and business intelligence. It boosts media team and business performance by enabling advertisers and brands to plan, buy, and analyze real-time bidding, direct, advanced TV, search, and social campaigns all in one platform. In 2020, nearly half a billion dollars flowed through our basis platform, and we really saw more agencies and brands take programmatic executions in-house. So if you're interested or have never seen basis, happy to set you up with a demo if you wanna reach out. 
Specifically in my role as the VP of Client Analytics, I oversee a national team of 30 client analysts that are responsible for the analytics services and support for clients, including both agencies and brands across the country. All right, thank you. Um, our next panelist is Julio, and I'll let him say his last name. Um, Julio was born in LA, and was, but was raised in the Midwest, and I will hold a special place in his heart. Julio holds an associate degree in broadcast journalism and a bachelor's in business and is currently a senior account strategist. On any given day, he handles optimization, he pitches new formats to clients, and manages client relationships. Since starting to work at Verizon Media, he won the coveted LEAD Award in 2019, Global LEAD for the United. He's proud of handling a few of Verizon Media's biggest accounts like Walmart, Sleep Number. Recently, he had been tasked to increase diversity with the help from several Verizon Media associates, and they have created a hiring best practice document that included building a diversity pipeline. Outside of work, he enjoys long walks with his new dog named Omar and taking photos of the food he's prepared. He's even thinking about opening a taco restaurant in a few years. Julio has two daughters, one that enjoys singing John Mayer songs with him and the other daughter keeping him in shape with their somersaults around the house. Julio collects shoes and at one point had about 300 pairs. Lastly, he enjoys making people smile and he loves Beyonce. Julio, thanks for joining us and take a minute to share a little bit about what you do at Verizon Media. I'm sure your recent diversity project was rewarding. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome. Yeah, Julio Aguirre here. Um, yeah, I've been at Verizon Media for just about under three years. Uh, I've done a lot of diversity and inclusion projects. Right now, we're currently working on um, trying to have that new normal within the office. Uh, we're calling that a uh, a coffee virtual break. Um, you know how you used to be in the cafeteria with a coworker and you used to talk about how your day was. Well, that's what we want to capture currently. Um, and it's going very well. And I mean, we're, we're going, we're trying to navigate through the, the virtual meeting fatigue, but when you're not talking about work, it's a little bit more engaging, a little bit more, uh, promising. Um, a few things that I've done with, uh, with my, with my day job, my optimizing and Walmart and things like that, is just being able to connect with what the client needs, what we're, how we're going to reach the the KPIs that are being put in front of us, and also working in a partnership with your teams, uh, your account manager, your account director, and your ad op specialist. Um, so it's it's a great it's a great experience just to get out there and seeing what uh, what new formats your your clients are trying to get with, and what strategies your company is trying to move forward with as well. So thank you, for, thank you for having me. You bet. Thanks, Julio. Um, next, we have Kay Weigel, and she's the Senior Vice President, Media Director at Swanson Russell, and she leads a team of 14 in the process of, plan of media planning and buying. Throughout her uh, years, 35 plus of the industry um, experience, she has worked on a wide variety of clients, local, regional, national, and international. These clients have diverse objectives and goals, necessitating an intimate knowledge of the strengths uses and trends of all type of media, TV, national spot, addressable OTT, radio, network spot and digital, print, out of home, social and digital, banners, digital and mobile pre-rolls, paid search, programmatic and remarketing. She has led her team to become Google certified with the agency being recognized as a premier certified partner in 2016. Hey, we're excited to hear more about you. Please tell us a little bit about your role at Swanson Russell. Hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Um, as a lot of you probably know, Swanson Russell is a full service um, advertising agency. We have offices in Omaha and Lincoln. And our, our team currently manages the media strategy and placement for about 50 clients. Uh, most of them are either national or international in scope. But as part of the um, agency's leadership team, I also, in addition to managing our staff, um, I participate in several framework committees that we have internally focused on innovation and new product offerings. But I think the most rewarding role for me is working directly on some of our largest clients in helping to build their media strategy. And, uh, you know, as Jenny said, I've been around for a long time, so I'm old. Um, but, and so most of my early work fo focused on traditional media, like um, TV, radio, print, 
But the digital landscape really turned media planning on its head, as, as most of you guys know. And more than half of our media now is being placed digitally. And so while it's made the work a lot more challenging, it's also made it a lot more exciting. Um, you know, every day is different. So the, the constantly evolving offerings of the digital space, I think have really increased the importance of the media department. And honestly, it's, it's made our work a lot more rewarding. So I'm, I'm excited to be here today. Thank you, Kay. Um, next, we have Rick Morano, who is the Vice President of Digital Marketing Services at Hearst DMS. He's responsible for the success of the local edge and in-view digital business. Under Marino's direction, Hearst DMS provides a full suite of powerful online marketing services to thousands of businesses across the country. He has driven industry-leading performances through evolving technologies in the digital marketing space. Working for HERS since 2010, Marino's large team of digital strategists have combined continuous research and development, the power and reach of the HERS Corporation with online technology for optimal marketing campaign results. In 2015, Rick developed and launched a new digital agency under the HERS umbrella of digital marketing agencies. Envy Digital has experienced significant and consistent growth since inception by providing expert level digital marketing services to mid-market businesses and larger SMBs across the country. Rick, thanks for joining us and tell us a little bit about your role at Hearst. Yeah, th thanks Jenny. Um, like, like Jenny said, uh, Vice President of Digital Marketing. I, I, I pretty much spend my entire day uh, focused on helping small businesses to mid-market businesses navigate the uh, digital marketing landscape. Um, uh, everything from, from search engine optimization to search engine marketing campaigns, social media management, uh, programmatic, reputation management, to website design and development, um, kind of a full suite of products and services um, that, that really help a small business um, market themselves, but also market themselves efficiently and, and not throw their entire budget away. Um, that's that's my biggest challenge and something that I'm always thinking about and keeps me up at night is how can I take that $1,000 a month budget or that $500 a month budget and, and make it go as far as possible for our, for our clients. Um, it's, a, it's a great challenge and, and something that, that I truly am focused on and passionate about. Thank you. All right, thanks, Rick. And then um, our last panelist, Dave Smith, is the Senior Director Advertising Operations at Verizon Media. Dave began his career in Atlanta in research, marketing, and sales promotions with a local Fox affiliate. He moved to CBS station sales, and spent eight years selling spot TV with a focus on General Motors, Hyundai, and McDonald's. In 2009, he relocated to Omaha to begin his career as a national sales executive with Yahoo. Now spanning over 12 years, he has held a variety of roles, including international assignment in Dublin in 2018 and 19, where he relaunched and centralized the account strategy team, supporting Europe, Middle East, Africa markets. In 2019, he returned to Omaha as head of advertising operations and global services for Verizon Media, supporting all markets for committals and bookings, order management, creative trafficking, optimization insights, and billing, billing reconciliations across managed IOs and programmatic platforms. He lives in Dundee with his wife and three children and is happy to be back in Omaha. Dave, thank you for joining us and please share more about with us about your role at Verizon Media. Well, thank you, Ginny. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've been very fortunate uh, with my career at Verizon Media because I've been able to really tap into uh, a bunch of different avenues of our business. Uh, not to mention, we are all so blessed to work in such a dynamic industry as digital media and digital online advertising because it's always changing. Uh, and it's certainly true with Verizon Media. For those that you, uh, for those of you that might not be completely aware, Verizon Media came about with the merging of Yahoo and AOL assets. Uh, so combined with those media assets, an exclusive partnership with Microsoft, uh, as well as a full stack DSP and SSP ad platform. We're servicing business uh, globally uh, and have really been well positioned to see this massive migration from managed IO to programmatic. Uh, we've been instrumental in 
adopting new ad formats and making sure that digital out of home as well as CTV and advanced TV um, supply has a room in our DSP. Uh, in addition to the advertising operations functions, I also leave our, lead our global so services business, uh, which is based out of Bangalore. And we've got roughly 200 people in Bangalore that are servicing all of the global markets. And this includes functions from ad operations into optimization services. We just launched a global account services initiative where we can provide full account service to any global market that's looking for uh, some assistance or some relief because we're at that point now where we have to really begin to be a little bit more strategic in how we segment our business because as the business changes, so do the service models for that business. Uh, so it's been exciting to play a role as we revisit what that uh, service model looks like both in the US and international markets. Great, thank you, Dave. Um, now that we've met all our panelists, let's get started with some questions. Um, our first question we're going to direct to Liz. Um, Liz, in terms that for those of us who may be not familiar with cookies, can you explain exactly what cookies are and what it means to go cookie-less? And then you can also add, what does that mean for Centro? Sure. So cookies are like third, unique IDs or third party cookies and other browser and mobile specific identifiers really allow advertisers and ad tech companies to track users across websites. And this is order in order for them to um, serve relevant ads and track performance. And then there are both first and third party cookies that collect user relevant information and similar data. However, the data they're collecting and how they're using it is just used in different purposes. So really first party cookies are considered mostly harmless as they're used to enhance a user's site experience and they're not considered, considered intrusive. Whereas third party cookies are controversial. That's really when we're talking about the death of the cookies, we're really focusing in here on third party cookies as there's more in many instances of privacy infringement in the um, just use of personal data that people don't realize is being collected. So going cookie-less really just boils down to users demanding greater privacy and transparency, including choice and control of how their personal data is used since privacy is really a consumer right. Both marketers and consumers need to be protected and the, these impending regulations really have the intention to respect the consumer's privacy and for us all to be really honest with them. So consumer privacy has really been loosely regulated in the past. It's really been done in good faith. Um, and we've had nothing really in place in our industry to like reprimand companies for up, um, operating unlawfully. So um, there should be no fear around the demise of um, our cookie list future. It's really an opportunity to um, be more honest with our um, consumers. So it's, it's very clear that the web ecosystem needs to evolve and meet the, the user demands of these of privacy needs. Um, and until there's really any government regulation in place, large com companies um, really like web browsers are taking it upon themselves to really enforce this change. Um, at Centro, we believe we shouldn't be exploiting any of these loopholes and we should really be respecting consumers' privacy. So we're trying to find the right balance between scale and privacy as there's really not a one size fits all solution to replace the cookie. So some of the things we're doing is leveraging machine learning in our basis technology. So this uses artificial intelligence and privacy approved data across uh, about 30 parameters to decide um, how much to bid on an impression. So this tactic can improve media performance all without using cookies or infringing on any audience's privacy. We're also ingesting anonymized data sources. So utilizing sources such as the US Census, American Community Survey, North American Industry Classification um, Systems to really strengthen localized insights and allow for smarter decisioning to improve performance and really eliminate any wasted impressions. Um, we're incorporating semantic targeting. So uh, contextual targeting, which now uses natural language processing to understand the semantics and tone 
Um, so we're partnering with providers like CompScore, Double Verify, Oracle, Peer39, who proved in these tactics of contextual targeting have proved possibly more effective and less expensive than these third-party audiences that are based off of cookie data. Um, we've also evolved our performance tracking since we can't track um, across channels. Um, so while we're offering interim solutions like cookie list conversions for click-through conversions, we're guiding our performance shifting to illustrate media performance more, more fully and thoughtfully with customer data, platform data, site analytics, and brand lift studies. Um, I was reading an article interestingly um, recently, and I thought it was interesting that the way this was phrased is like everything old is new again. Um, in the sense that like going back to brand studies and all these like intense performance tracking technologies that we might not necessarily be able to um, use. Um, going back to kind of to the way we uh, previously ran media, which um, is interesting in that sense. And I think, I think you, the way we track performance um, without cookies will evolve and there will be, um, again, not like a one size fits all approach, but I think the light at the end of the tunnel is there in terms of like where we're getting and the ultimate reasoning behind the elimination of cookies. Thank you. Going with that, um, Rick, are there new technologies that will need to be embraced or how will that, how will yeah, that, that work? Sure, that, it's, it's evolving fast. Um, and, and like Liz said, uh, there, there really is no one size fits all solution. Um, there, there's going to be different approaches. Um, that, that we need to kind of properly understand, test and combine in order to, to maintain that, that same level of ad effectiveness. Um, but again, also what Liz said was, was old is new. I, I really like that because that, that's how I feel a little bit about it, especially with this, this next point. There's, there's an opportunity to partner with publishers um, who have really strong first party data. Yeah, and it's kind of like how we used to do it, right? You would you would look for a, a website that, that made sense um, to your brand and had the right audience, and then you would place the ad on that website. Um, that's really coming back in play. It, it's just going to be even stronger now with programmatic and AI. Uh, back in the day, you didn't have that. You would just you know place a media buy and, and put your display ad on the website and hope for the best. But um, now there's so much more technology and, and the ability to, to track and improve, automate, automate ad improvement. Um, is just going to make that even better. So, um, you know, that's important. Many publishers have have gathered significant data on interests um, of subscribers who go beyond their paywalls. And, and really, as third-party cookies meet their demise, publishers are going to make the most of that information. Um, I work for a publishing company. I, I work for Hearst. We have newspapers and TV stations and um, a lot of different media sources and magazines all over. And in in that part of the business is really growing because we have first party data and, and that's the type of information you can use to really target audiences. So finding publishers to partner with is really important. Um, looking for strategic ad placements on sites and channels um, with a viewer that closely overlaps with your target audience um, is going to be important. Um, keeping an eye out and, and embracing new technologies. So this is gonna, this type of shift is going to create new opportunities and new technology and new platforms that can really help brands begin to move away from cookie reliance. Um, many ad tech companies are investing heavily in, in privacy compliant demographic based IDs, um, which will provide a kind of a persistent and more accurate view of a user. Um, there's a lot of ad tech players in the space that, that you know, you can search for and find, but, you know, live ramp and the trade desk are coming together to kind of share data, share um, anonymized IDs through unified frameworks. Um, and that could be more promising in the long term, but it, it's pretty early to judge the effectiveness of that. So um, there's there's that. And then the, the last thing I'll say is you have a lot of, of data. Um, and, and this is kind of an opportunity to strengthen your focus on on your kind of your current KPIs and, and optimize your your campaigns towards them. So, you know, we, like I said before, we have a lot of small businesses and mid-market businesses that, um, you know, we've used we've used audiences to help their campaigns perform better. And now that those third party audiences are taken, are going to be taken away, we need to just get stronger with, with our, our current tracking. Um, using Google Analytics properly combined and using goals and setting 
setting goals and combining that with programmatic and machine learning um, using really powerful ad testing software to help generate the best performance based on their goals. Um, for example, we use a system that, that really helps us automate ad creative and audience testing in Facebook. Um, so we can run you know, multiple ads against three different audience sets and, and measure performance against a real goal. And we're just, we're just shifting our focus and, and putting more of our resources into that type of campaign, um, that type of campaign optimization, as opposed to just kind of relying on, on audience tracking. And, and the more the more focus we put into to testing and, and using Google Analytics to track um, prop, set proper goals and optimize towards those goals, the better the campaigns are going to perform. So it's really just about removing that reliance on that third party audience tracking and, and going back to, um, like what Liz said, old is new, going back to some old techniques that are even stronger now because they're backed by even better technology like programmatic and AI. Thank you. Um, so Julio, what strategies do you use um, when you are working and to assist your clients with digital advertising, specifically with targeting, like we're talking about? I kind of feel like Liz and Rick uh, answered that question there. Uh, you know, uh, Liz was talking about first party uh, data. Uh, Rick was talking about optimizing. And that's one of the first things that we do. Uh, Verizon Media has a few, uh, a few ways that they can target audiences. Uh, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, Yahoo has 90, 900 million uh, visitors a month to their sites. So we have a bunch of uh, first party data there, just ready to use. Uh, we leveraged our, our, our male uh, domain audiences. Uh, we were able to uh, see what purchases, what purchases they just had. We were able to see uh, what sites just came into their, their inbox. We were able to use that data for our benefit. Uh, we're, we are also able to layer, like I said, uh, for, um, purchase receipts and then uh, add those to the client's uh, third-party data. So we are mixing in our data and the client's data to hit their KPIs and reach the goals that they want. Um, we, like, like Liz said, uh, contextuals, we're, we're using those as well. Um, and then we also have a, PO, a point of interest targeting. Um, so that's one of our, our benefits that we use with Verizon Media. Uh, we just want to have like a more holistic solution for everyone. And we want to have every piece of the puzzle uh, figured out and um, placed correctly for the client and to reach the customer's needs. So that's what we do at a, on a daily basis with Verizon, Verizon Media. So again, like I said, first party data, our Yahoo sites, our mail domain and purchase receipts are something that we, we use on a daily basis. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Kay, how do these um, changes affect programmatic and privacy for your clients? Well, you know, pro <clears throat> excuse me, programmatic um, has really been embraced by most of our clients. Um, and the the ways that we could target were, were pretty mind blowing. Um, but, you know, as as the previous um, panel members have discussed with all of these changing privacy laws, I think it's more important than ever for us to seek, seek out you know, first of all, programmatic vendors who saw these changes coming uh, a while back and are already investing in that first party data um, and, and aren't reliant on cookies anymore. And then as um, Rick and Liz talked about, I, I really think contextual targeting will see a big resurgence. Um, you know, before programmatic, we used to look for websites and, and content that was specific um, to whatever our clients were, were trying to sell. Um, for example, we have quite a few clients that sell agricultural products. So, you know, when we, st when we started using programmatic, it really was an affordable way for us to add a lot more impressions, but we typically saw better performance um, from a click-through and conversion standpoint on those endemic sites anyway. So um, I think it takes, it takes some more time to research those specific sites and, and those vendors who have those first-party uh, data relationships. But I, I think the results will potentially be even better down the road. Um, and I also think the change in privacy laws also increases the importance of our clients and, and all businesses um, in building their own databases. So, you know, if, if your website visitors opt in for future communications, you can target those past visitors um, and, and current customers through digital advertising, including over the top TV and, and social and, and a lot of those different things. So. Um, while I think the efficiency of programmatic um, advertising is still available, um, by doing that, you just aren't reliant on the third-party data for targeting. 
Uh, and Kate, look, I'll add, because you touched on something that I think is important, which is, you know, when you first moved to programmatic and you were looking at where you were actually seeing performance uh, conversions or click throughs from your publishing partners or, or you know, those sites that were you, you were using for your campaigns. Um, as we get more and more focused on privacy across the country, uh, working with partners that have a very sophisticated and robust consent management platform becomes really crucial, especially to all of the agencies that are really sticking their necks out for their clients. Uh, and it's important that you're, you're looking at partners that you can trust because, uh, you know, when, when you start looking under the rug at, at fraudulent advertisers, domain spoofing, all of the little tricks that people do, um, having a, a, a really solid consent management platform is going to help agencies build that trust with their clients that, that you know, they know where they're placing their ads and, and there's a certain amount of trust there. That's very true. Um, and Dave, can you share um, optimization insights in regards to the digital advertising? Yeah, look, it's come a long way, right? Uh, from where we were just looking at click throughs, uh, you know, sites and traffic conversions. Uh, but we we help support teams like Julio's teams um, and, you know, various account management account strategy works across our company. And we're looking at everything, right? It's, it's age, gender, it's day parting. We look at uh, cross screen where we can track frequency uh, and uh, that movement across screens, whether it's, you know, again, CTV mobile devices, digital out of home, uh, as well as all of the, the de desktop traffic that we've got. Um, but we're, we're also looking really closely at that bid waterfall, right? When you've got so many um, buyers in the marketplace, it's really important as we're trying to optimize towards performance and pacing uh, that we understand uh, how that bid strategy is working with the associated audience segments or different optimization levers that we may be pulling to drive that that performance and and look when we talk about optim optimizing campaigns it's it requires a, a little bit of finesse because you know you optimize towards performance and usually you're sacrificing delivery or uh, you know campaign pacing and then you go back to campaign pacing and you want to get that back up because the, the advertiser needs some scale and then you see a little drop off in your performance. So it's a stair step and you're constantly looking at those permutations of, again, signals and levers that we can pull to be able to drive that. Uh, so it's, you know, optimization insights. It pretty much covers everything that we have available uh, and whether that's our own first party data and a client's first party data that maybe we've ingested, as well as all of the other creative signals that you might see, whether it's, you know, A-B testing or, um, you know, trying to swap out fresh creative, so. Thank you. Um, one of the things that, you know, you guys have kind of touched upon a little bit is like with in-house versus managed services. And so actually, I'd like to hear all of your thoughts on you know, how is it best to manage and how do you get the best out of your agency? And when is the best time to use a managed service? Um, so Liz, if you wanna start with that and if you have any thoughts. Yeah, I think it depends on um, the skill set and the ultimate goal of the agency or brand. I think a lot of people are, are um, especially in the pandemic, we've seen so many people wanting to in-house and take things in-house, which is wonderful. Um, and I think um, agencies and brands are really wanting to own that and have that experience. And um, we're also having the talent now of you know, digital media hasn't been around for so long, but that talent is growing and that pool is growing and people want to own that and pull the levers themselves. Um, I think the best way to go about it is usually have like a hybrid approach and start off by managed services, slowly hire up, have 
use use a, a platform or an agency that can work alongside you to help train your own staff members to get them where they needed to go. Um, that is something we've seen a huge surge in um, in Central and using our platform. We have managed services and self service. Um, and we have this hybrid model where people can um, originally start off with managed services and then we have a team of customer support um, specialists who really let them in house it long term and transition that work um, to the agency or brand because I think most agencies and brands really want to really do want to own that it's usually like a one to two year approach I feel like though from when they originally decide that's the way they want to go to actually fully seeing it fleshed out. Um, it's not something that you can just quickly in-house, I feel like. I think I think it needs a phased approach, but I, I, I think it's the smart way to go long-term. That's interesting. Kay, do you have, I mean, as working in an advertising agency, anything to add, add with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there are benefits to both. Um, you know, we, we use managed services currently, um, and it gives us the option of working with different vendors whose tech, you know, one, one vendor's tech stack might be a much better fit for a certain group of clients. And then another uh, vendor's tech stack is a, is a better fit for others. Um, I think the other advantage is they take care of the optimization for you. That said, you really need to keep an eye on the performance and, and make sure that, that that vendor is optimizing, um, you know, hour to hour, day to day, whatever. Um, and I think if you're thinking about bringing programmatic in-house, the toughest decision is trying to figure out which platform to use, right? I mean, there are so many out there. Um, so a lot of due diligence is really needed to figure out what the best fit is for the majority of your clients. And then you also have to, you know, as Liz said, you also have to staff up for that to ensure that you're, you're spending the time that's necessary to optimize and then, um, you know, finally, you need to take into consideration what is the, the cost of that software um, subscription? Is, is it a monthly? Is it a one time? Whatever. Um, and then you need to figure out how much you how much you can save on those buys as compared to how much you can upcharge to to cover those costs um, and, and make sure that it's it's working from a financial standpoint as well. Very true. Um, Rick, anything to, to piggyback on with that? Yeah, yeah, I would say that um, when working with an agency, don't try not to just um, rely on, on the agency to do it all. Um, and I know it sounds obvious, but make sure you have somebody on, on your team that's very close and engaged with the agency. Um, try to understand the economics of an agency. The, the agency's margins are, are usually razor thin. Um, that savings is passed down to you, but that also means that you're not going to have one person that's spending um, eight hours a day looking at your campaign. Um, they have other work. They're an agency. Um, and the more our best clients are the clients that are that are totally engaged with us. And and I'll just give you an example. We when we run a, a great social media campaign, it's it's because the client is uh, helping us um, understand their brand, um, helping us develop the content together. Uh, providing images and videos from their operation that we couldn't otherwise get. Um, agencies and, and strategists on agency teams don't know everything about every industry. Um, they, they know about their industry. They know how to run a great social campaign. They know how to run a great um, search engine marketing campaign, but they might not know exactly a, you know every, every um, piece of your business. Uh, so the, we, we have clients that are, are very disengaged and, and those campaigns just don't perform as well. Um, so, you know, Think of them as an extension of your team and they'll they'll perform so much better for you and, and you'll be much happier with that. And and I and I say that because sometimes clients think, well, I, I'm paying this money, so I don't have to worry about this at all. I, I shouldn't be engaged. I don't need to give anything to them. They should do it all. They should build the website. Um, they should write the content. And, and they can. And agencies will do that. We'll take it and we'll do it. Uh, but man, it really performs great when when your team is also involved with the agency as like a partnership. And I know that sounds obvious, but it's just not always the case. Um, Julio, anything to, to add to what we've been talking about? Yeah, I think I think everyone hit the hit said the same thing. I think it's just building a partnership with the agencies, what they want and what the client wants on their side. Uh, on our side here in Native, we, uh, Verizon Media, we walk our clients and agencies through every step of the way, how to optimize, what to look for, what reports to run. 
it's a real true partnership. And I think that's how you gain one loyalty and that's how you gain trust from uh, the agency. So on our side, again, it's just uh, building that partnership, building the, um, what the client wants to do and what they want to move forward with just to give them the ability to have the keys to drive that car. Right. Um, just so they, when they see a, um, an issue with their account and why it's not spending, they can see why they know what, where to go and get the answers. Um, and that's how they come back with another client. They come back with more, more, I guess, more budget too. That's the way that we grow our company internally and externally because you have that loyalty. So. Thank you, uh, Dave. I'll let you take it. Anything else? Uh, well, look, to everybody's point, it is a, extremely expensive and challenging for anyone to talk about taking their programmatic buying in-house if they haven't already. Like, it is an uphill climb. And even what Julio said was that, yeah, we've got a lot of people and large teams that are invested in onboarding clients. But yet, that doesn't replace Julio's role or account manager's role because it takes forever for these clients to onboard uh, because as we're onboarding them, the landscape is changing, right? There's like, we're talking about cookie-less world. This is new tech uh, that we're using to be able to, you know, either provide an omni-channel solution or, or cross device, uh, you know, audience graphs. It is incredibly complex. Now for those advertisers that maybe have simple goals, simple KPIs, yeah, maybe they could manage that sort of like they've thought about bringing their search engine optimization in house, which is far less complex than what uh, the rest of programmatic looks like. I think there is an opportunity though with uh, mid and smaller tier agencies to absolutely uh, get up to, up to speed as quickly as they can, because there are a lot of SMB advertisers out there that hear these bu buzzwords, but this is an area of opportunity for all of these agencies to uh, really just kind of cement their partnerships or, you know, again, just talk about where their strengths are as it benefits, uh, again, these smaller, more local market, smaller regional advertisers. And before we move on really quick, I do want to jump in and say, Kay did say that there are different platforms out there for running your ads. And one of the, the key things that agencies do is compare us to Google ads or compare us to Facebook and things like that. I think that's where you kind of um, lose momentum, just trying to compare where you're serving. Um, it's a it's a grand marketplace, right? It's, it's huge. I think we should, um, the agencies should know what they're going to get into depending on the platform. And that's, there you go. Yeah, a good, a good point. Um, so we're kind of winding down here. I wanted to give everybody a chance, you know, we covered, you know, cook, that's a, that could, we could talk about that for days. Um, but I just didn't know if, if you guys have something, one last nugget or something you want to kind of end the, um, the panel on whoever wants to go. I'll go. So I think even for myself, like, and being in analytics, like this is a very overwhelming topic and you can read articles that'll tell you one thing and read another article that will tell you something else. It's, it can be very overwhelming. And I think even myself, I feel constantly like behind the curves because it is constantly changing. Um, so I think depending on like articles you read, it's like taking it with a lens of like every everyone kind of has their own opinion about this. So determining, um, what's your source of truth and where you go to for information. Um, because yeah, it, it's just very overwhelming and constantly changing. And I'll find like one good article where I'm like, okay, this is my North star currently. And I feel like this is a very agnostic approach to the cookie world. Um, but yeah, overwhelming, even from an, from someone who's in, in the field every day of like analytics and performance. So um, right there with everybody else, I'm sure in, in that feeling. Good. Um, I want to uh, thank everybody for joining us today. Are there any, were there any questions, um, Terry or Ann? I am. <clears throat> there are not any questions in the chat right now. Um, I'm surprised that we haven't generated a few from this interesting material that we're, we're hearing from. Um, 
I don't see any in the chat right now. Yeah, it's it's kind of a it can be an overwhelming topic and you know we got a lot of great information today and just trying to digest it and um, we can make everybody's um, information available if anybody out there has any questions on anything. Um, you can reach out to any of the panelists with any questions or to get um, more more information. So again, I want to thank everybody for taking your time today. Um, as a you know media planner myself, this was all very good information. I've been able to work with all of you at some point, and so I just appreciate all the information that you've given um, given our our audience today. So thank you very much. Thank you. Jenny, Kay, Rick, Liz, Julio, and Dave, thank you for taking the time to join us today and for sharing your insights. Uh, I'm sure your uh, insights and your thought leadership has been valued by everybody attending today. I'm Daryl Anderson, the Creative Director for Clark Creative Group and AAF Omaha's current president. Um, our board and committee members, we've been working to bring creative events, conferences, new and special events, along with these webinars and virtual programming to our members. Um, speaking of members, member benefits, we have two member perks today to award. Um, one goes out to Penny Hatchell and one to Allison Rezgorchek. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, you both have won $10 gift cards from Eileen's Cookies, donated by AAF Omaha's member, Claudia Martin. Um, I'm sure many people know Claudia. Um, Claudia volunteers on our membership committee and works on the members perks program. Uh, your gift cards will be mailed out to you ladies. Uh, as Jenny mentioned, I got some housekeeping to take care of. Keep you for just a few more minutes here. Uh, as Jenny mentioned earlier, AF Omaha and AF Lincoln are entering into an exciting merger to become AF Nebraska so that we can extend our reach across the state to all four corners and really present that unifying voice of advertising. Yesterday as a member, you received a notice um, that requires your action. If you are a member, please return your vote to approve the name change from AAF Omaha um, to the American Advertising Federation of Nebraska, AAF Nebraska. That's a legal motion that we need to take um, to create that name change. Our board of directors, we've approved the move to change the name. Um, but like I said, to make this change, we need all active members to approve the vote. So please get that vote in. Also in June, you're gonna receive your ballot for next year's board nominations. That board is slated to take over in July. We have some exciting new people um, wanting to join the board. And if anybody is interested, and once again, this will go across the state, um, please reach out to our board of directors. Uh, Terry Hamburger is also uh, willing to take any nominations that you may have. We have eight committees and each committee has up to five uh, spots on their committee that can be filled also. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors our elite sponsors and members from Centro. Thank you for Woodman Life, uh, your generosity to the Ad Fed of Omaha throughout the year, our website team and sponsors from Envoy. And thank you to my agency, Clark Creative Group, um, for being today's program sponsor. Mark your calendars for some upcoming events. These events can be found at afomaha.org as well as uh, AAFnationals.org, AAF.org and AAFomaha.org. Um, a couple of the events, uh, May 27th, Nationals is hosting a caffeine chat series um, with JBM Watson Advertising and Grace, Grace Murphy. Uh, she's the brand strategy leader and will be presenting the programming and it's free uh, to AAF members. Our National Ad America Conference will be held June 7th through June 11th. I have looked at that schedule. There are many great speakers and opportunities. Um, it's really a chance to kind of get some new insights and refresh your enthusiasm in the industry. 
uh, take a look at that on the AAFnational.org website. Um, our next professional panel discussion is June 29th. This panel is going to be on the state of social media. We have some ex very exciting panelists to kind of tell you uh, the trends and tips and tricks for uh, planning your social calendars. Mark your calendars for on brand, which will be held July 15th. Uh, registration is live now. We're happy to be bringing this back to you in a virtual uh, environment. This is a conference hosted by AF Omaha, PRSA, AIGA, AMA. Um, registration is $75 per person. And all members can use a discount code for the conference. Um, I'd also like to mention our new talent directory we have created. That can be found on our website, um, along with many DNI resources that we have been adding to our site regularly. Uh, the hiring gap in marketing and advertising has been, been well documented over the year. In order to address this, AAF Omaha has created a talent directory focused on minority creatives and marketers. AAF Omaha believes this tool will increase the referral and hiring pools for various companies who hire an incredible amount of full-time personnel and freelancers locally. Um, we're going to post that link in the chat so you can find that talent directory form and please uh, feel free to share it. Um, again, thank you to our panelists, our sponsor, Centro Woodman Life Envoy, um, and thank you all for joining us today. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.